This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Even though it's a little soggy, it's always nice to be together to worship. Good morning. And please rise and body our spirit for our call to worship. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to observe your righteous ordinances. I am severely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept my offerings of praise, O Lord, and teach me your ordinances. I hold my life in my hand continually, but I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. Your decrees are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. Incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. Please remain standing for our opening hymn, Open My Eyes That I May See, from the hymnal, the hardback hymnal 454.
remain standing for our opening prayer uh, recited in unison creator God holy gardener who sustains and nurtures all life open us today to your life-giving grace and transformative love as we notice our internal struggles empower us to greet the wheat and the weeds in our own hearts with care and compassion as we recognize the challenges and suffering in our community, inspire us to meet the weeds and the wheat in our neighbors with acceptance and love. We know that you alone have the final say, and so we give ourselves over to you as instruments of hospitality and grace that we would tend our neighbors even as we are tended by you. Amen. Please be seated. Our special scripture this morning comes from Isaiah 58, verse 11. And the Lord will continually guide you and satisfy your desire in scorched places and give strength to your bones. And you will be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Yeah, we are having a watered garden. Okay. Uh, this morning. Uh, do we have any children who'd like to come up for children's time? Hi, how are you? What's your name? What is it? Paxton. Paxton, nice to meet you. My name's Dan. It's a snazzy shirt. I really like it. Yellow suits you quite well. Hey, Melody, how are you? Hi, MJ. It's nice to have you this morning. We have a small but mighty group here. Yeah. So what do I have here in front of me? What is this? It's a bucket. What do you think is inside? No, no. Want to take a look inside? Oh, look, interesting. There are no toys. It's not very interesting. <laughs> toys that the yeah, IMJ could use. We got gloves. We got scrub brush. Got more gloves and cleaner. Uh, I put this together because we're thinking of people up in Vermont. And you guys know where uh, <coughs> Pastor Gary is? Who's Pastor Gary this week? Well, you know, he went up to Vermont and he was going to be part of um, helping with a race. There were going to be people running through Vermont through the trails and the trees. And unfortunately, there was so much rain and so much flooding, they had to cancel the race. You know what happened? Everybody who was going to race changed their mind. They couldn't race, they canceled it, and they stayed there to help the people in Vermont. And today's message is about hearing what God and what Jesus wants us to do. And how do we know when we need to do something? Let me ask you something. You guys, did you make your bed this morning? No? Oh boy. Uh, how about when you have to clean up your toys? Who tells you to clean up your toys and pick up things? Mom, right? You listen to mom. Moms? Yeah. Dads. Right. We listen to people in our lives who give us guidance so we know what to do. Right? And in the same way, and your, oh, your sister's a little bossy, is she sometimes? She's older. Well, you got to yield to age. That's good. That's good. But yeah, sometimes we, we, we listen for what's expected. And of course, when we think about Jesus, how do we know what Jesus wants us to do? Where do we find out about that? One way is to read the Bible, yeah. 
another way maybe is to I don't know who else who else teaches you stuff about Jesus yeah so we've got leaders in the church who, who talk to you and, and give you encouragement and this week I saw an email from Pastor Gary and he talked about the people in Vermont and I I felt in a way Jesus was talking to me or I knew what Jesus wanted so that we can find different ways to hear from people in our lives and so we want to make a good positive difference in helping others and you guys do a good job of that uh, in the Sunday school because you've done a lot of mission projects so you guys know all about this and we're doing kids cleanup today it's gonna fall uh, it's a heavy load on a couple of kids it's the gym okay Hopefully we get a few more hands in there. Okay, so they're going to be separating things for donations for other people. So that uh, is very much in the spirit of thinking of other people. And we are thinking of the people in Vermont and in the path of the storms uh, this morning. So, okay. Well, you guys have a, your, your work cut out for you today, and we do as well. So thanks for coming up. Thanks for coming in today on such a mucky day. We're happy to have you. Okay? We'll have you go. Oh, yes, we are going to thank you. See, this, is, this gets back to uh, taking some counsel and listening to others in your life, right? So let's put our hands together with, in prayer. I'll say a brief prayer, and then we'll move into the Lord's Prayer. Okay? Dear Heavenly Father and dear loving God, Thank you for all of the loving, caring voices in our lives that help to guide us. Help us to listen carefully and to follow our hearts to do what we know to be the right thing. Help us to make this world a better place for each other, for our siblings, for our friends, and for people we don't even know. We say all this in the loving name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Loving God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, today's scripture reading is a familiar one. It comes from the Gospel of Matthew uh, 13, chapter 13, verses 1 through 9, as well as 18 through 23. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came up and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places, where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly, but because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Listen, then, to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. 
But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. God is still speaking. In the parable of the sower, we just heard read by Dan. It's likely one that you've heard many times and may be very familiar to you. When we're honest with ourselves, we can likely see ourselves as the seed in all of these different circumstances along the path at different points in our lives. Failing to take root, eaten by the birds, yielding nothing. Trying to take root, but being unfocused, not doing what we should, and failing to grow. Starting to grow, but being choked by the weeds, the distractions of the world. And finally, being productive, having taken root to grow and use our gifts, according to our abilities, to yield a bounteous harvest for all to enjoy. Are we hearing what Jesus says, or is this parable so familiar, we no longer hear these words with Christian understanding as disciples? What is being said? In order to understand, I think it is worth looking at how we each communicate with God so that we can hear what he is saying to each of us in our daily lives. Are we truly listening for God's voice? Or is God saying, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Senses of hearing and seeing are wonderful gifts, and we use them the best way that we can. In a world where so many people are listening through earbuds and communicating through cell phones and text messages, are we taking the time to hear and see what we need to do in order to enrich life for ourselves and those around us? Sight and hearing are not essential to life, as evidenced by those among us who are blind or deaf and still excel, learning to live using other senses. But for those of us with eyes that can see and ears that can hear, are we using those gifts to be the best disciples of Christ that we can be? Sight and sound can give us wonderful connection to other people unless we choose to zone out since that path is easier than getting involved. Getting involved could get complicated. If we step out of our usual routines, we fear what might happen. We become anxious about the new and unfamiliar. Our safe life becomes upended. We might ask to do things that challenge us and see things from a different perspective. Think about it, helping others, being disciples does not have to be complicated. It can be simple ways that we make life easier for others day by day. It does not have to be a grandiose project with a big splash, but it can be a ripple of peace in the flow of daily life. As blessed children of God in a stressful modern world, paying forward God's love to others can be found in simple acts holding the elevator door for someone who's obviously in a hurry. Let someone else take that parking spot you had your eye on, a crowded parking lot. Give a thank you wave to the person on the highway who gave you room to change lanes during rush hour. In these post-pandemic days, people say that everyone is less courteous and more self-absorbed. That apparently is the fruit of isolation and lack of community over the many months of the pandemic. We must work to overcome those new patterns before they become bad habits. Our daily lives are made up of moments. One by one, as Christians, we can choose to infuse our interaction with God, interactions with God's love for others or automatically just rush past them absorbed in our own tasks and duties of the day. 
The little acts of kindness are what brings peacefulness to our lives and allows us to live and let live. Making eye contact with someone and giving them a smile, even if we don't return, even if they do not return a smile in return, helps us to calm the anxiety we feel when we let life's burdens get the better of us and get caught up in the frenzy of our modern life. I think that to be true disciples of Christ, we need the resiliency that God's grace gives to us to carry on, even when life seems hard and challenges seem insurmountable. How do we do that? We must figure out the best way each of us can hear God's directions and guidance for us in our daily lives. Some people find prayer is how they best communicate with God. Some people find music, it's harmony and energy. Others meditate, finding God in silence. Some people garden, finding communion with God, worn by the sun and energized by the plants they nurture. They nurture. Some find long walks in the woods, forest bathing, as the best way to feel God's presence and hear what he has to tell us while listening to the rustling leaves above our heads and beneath our feet. Some find sitting by the sea, looking at the vastness of the ocean and hearing the rhythm of the waves gives us peace and rejuvenation for our daily lives, blessed by God's great expansive creation. Whatever it is for you, find that connection with God as often as you can. Find how you can be in the zone with God every day. And it will give you the strength and creative energy to carry on. Be grateful for all the blessings we enjoy as God's gifts to us. Only then can we have humility and strength to care for others. From the seeds of kindness we sow in life's rich soil, let us share God's bounty and acts of grace to each other and the communities we live and work in. Let us build and nurture a community of love with God's help. If you ever have a sense that you can hear God saying, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Stop, breathe, listen, understand, then carry on being gentle with yourself and others. Amen. Now comes the time for us to share, to share our prayers and joys, our joys and our joys and concerns. That's much better. Does anyone have Together, let us pray for the people of this congregation and those dear ones they have asked we pray for today, for those who suffer and those in trouble, the concerns of this local community and our country, the world and its peoples and its leaders, the Church Universal, the leaders, its members, and its mission. Amen. If you do want to make an offering for the uh, victims in Vermont, you can do that either as a cash offering in the plate today that will all go to Vermont, or you can make a church uh, check out to this church and put in the um, line for a reason, either fund 802 or Vermont floods, and we'll see that that goes to Vermont relief.
Creator God, from whom all blessings flow and grow, as we dedicate our tithes and offerings, we acknowledge that you have blessed us to be the fertile soil from which the good news of your kingdom will spring forth. Remind us that you are counting on us for fruitfulness, demonstrating for the world your love, grace, and power as we bear fruit that eases the suffering of the sick feeds the hungry, brings justice to the oppressed, and love and compassion to those who feel disconnected or forgotten. In Christ we pray, amen. Please remain standing for our final hymn uh, from our United Methodist Hymnal 139.
Lord, dismiss us with thy blessing. Fill our hearts with joy and peace. Let us each thy love possessing triumph in redeeming grace. O oh, refresh us, O oh, refresh us, traveling through this wilderness. Amen. Go in peace. All right, let's do 2247, Wonder of Wonders. Again, just random. <laughs> Two, two, four, seven. Yep, wonder of wonders. First and fourth. Wonder of wonders here Covenant with us is sealed. And long before we know or pray, God's love unfolds us. Okay, so this is a cue to get your hymn numbers for next week. 